Hello and welcome to another episode of MRCOG videos from ACE courses. This one is on the management of bladder injury. Bladder injury occurs in 0.5 to 2% of major gynecological operations. The good news is that if you identify the injury intraoperatively and manage, then long-term complications are virtually nil. However, if the bladder injury is unrecognized and untreated, it can result in a number of complications, including ileus, urinary ascites, intra-abdominal abscess, peritonitis, sepsis, and vesicovaginal fistulae. What are the risk factors for bladder injury? These include obesity, inadequate incision, large pelvic masses, congenital abnormalities, endometriosis, extensive pelvic dissection, previous pelvic surgery or cesarean section, malignancy and radiotherapy. Typical site of injury includes posterior bladder wall or between the ureteric orifices on the trigone. Injury occurs while mobilizing the bladder of the cervix. How do you prevent bladder injuries? The first tip is of course to maintain a high index of suspicion. You should keep bladder empty during all significant pelvic operations. Consider an intentional cystotomy if difficult bladder dissection is anticipated. And finally, it is important to do meticulous sharp dissection with appropriate countertraction to minimize the risk of bladder injury. How do you manage bladder injury? You should involve a urologist if the injury is near the ureters. Give intravenous antibiotics, particularly to cover gram-negative bacteria. The diagnosis of injury and assessment of the extent of injury may require the use of dilute methylene blue in the bladder, cystoscopy, or even an intentional anterior bladder wall cystotomy. Ureteric stenting with double J stents may be required if ureteric injury is suspected. This is, of course, more likely if the injury was in the posterior bladder wall or the trigone area. How do you repair the injury on the bladder? Use 2 or, or 3 or Vicro. Close the mucosa with continuous suturing as shown in the figure. Close the muscularis with continuous suture as shown again in the figure. However, if the bladder wall is thin, then you should use interrupted figure of eight stitches. It's a good idea to interpose omentum between the bladder and the vaginal vault with posterior bladder wall injuries. This will minimize the risk of fistulation. Test the repair by distending the bladder with water. You should then drain the bladder with urethral and or suprapubic catheter for 7 to 10 days. Dual catheterization will minimize the risk of bladder leak from the injury repair site from a blocked catheter. Finally, you should drain the pelvis with a Robinson drain. Remove the drain when the drainage is less than 25 mils or so in 24 hours. I hope you found this video on the management of bladder injury during gynecological operations useful. This video was shot while I was in Khon Khan, a city in Thailand. I was here for a meeting and I thought while I'm here I could do one or two videos for you. And the materials in this video are based on our book, Gynecologic and Obstetric Surgery, Challenges and Management Options, 
it's well worth a read. And any profit from this book will go to support healthcare providers in Africa and other low-income countries. Until we meet again on another MRCOG video, goodbye from Thailand.